my entire career practicing sleep medicine has been involved with extreme sleep, which are the parasomnias defined as the abnormal behaviors and experiences that accompany sleep. And really the parasomnias involve mixed states of sleep and wakefulness, which are very hazardous experiences because if you're interacting with the actual environment, with a lot of your brain still asleep, you're really setting yourself up to injuring yourself or anyone in your vicinity. So uh, also with the parasomnias, our basic instincts can be released. And I'm talking about all our basic instincts. Sexual behavior, feeding behavior, aggression, violence, exploration, locomotion. Everything we can do in our waking lives can become unleashed in a very inappropriate way during our sleep. So on September 11th, 1982, when I started my practice of sleep medicine, the second patient I saw was a gentleman from Golden Valley, Minnesota named Donald Dorff. And Don complained of violent moving nightmares, which is a beautiful description of REM sleep behavior disorder. For several, several years, he was acting out dreams that were very different from his previous dreams. During his RBD dreams, he was being confronted by unfamiliar people or even animals, and he had to respond by hitting back uh, or becoming very aggressive to protect himself or his wife. He would also have sports dreams that were very aggressive. And in fact, the dream that he had that led to his coming to see me was uh, a dream involving American football. He was a uh, halfback carrying the ball through the line of scrimmage, and he lowered his shoulder to... Uh, uh, really uh, anticipate an impact with a 280-pound lineman, and when he came to, he had actually lowered his shoulder into the dresser on the far side of his bedroom, and his head hit the wall, and he gashed himself and really needed a lot of stitches after all the blood had spilled on the ground. He had no medical disorder, no psychiatric disorder. He had never been a sleepwalker earlier in his life, so this is the first type of parasomnia he had experienced. Five nights later, I decided to go to the sleep lab to be with the sleep technologist when we, we monitor him in the sleep lab. And we saw something that was really unprecedented, that during rapid eye movement sleep, instead of displaying the usual mammalian paralysis, which protects people and other mammals from acting out their dreams, Don had lost that paralysis and he had muscle tone, muscle twitching, and during each of his four REM sleep episodes, he actually was twitching, jerking around, throwing punches, kicking, talking, shouting, swearing, and when we entered the room after each of these events, he reported immediately a dream, and the action in the dream matched what we had seen. So there's a beautiful correspondence between the dream activity that he was acting out and the behaviors that we observed. And that was really the beginning of our identification of REM sleep behavior disorder known as RBD. Now fortunately, we were able to come out with a medication uh, through trial and error to calm him down. And what was interesting is that the medication clonazepam, which is a potent benzodiazepine anticonvulsant, that medication not only stopped the behaviors of RBD, but it restored normal dreams. And so that has really piqued the interest of dream researchers because RBD is a dream disorder almost as much as a behavior disorder of sleep. So in terms of conceptualizing dream generation, RBD is a really fertile area for research. And so with Don, his bad dreams had gone away along with the bad behaviors, and he was a very happy camper to play golf mm -hmm. in his retirement. Now, as we started seeing more and more of these patients, and they were being reported around the world, after a certain number of years, years we realized that a lot of these men with REM behavior disorder developed Parkinson's disease, which is a classic neurologic disorder involving a resting tremor, muscle rigidity, uh, slowed down movements called bradykinesia, and also a poor uh, stability of your posture. So there are really well-defined signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease, which involves a depletion of dopamine cells in the brainstem area called the substantia nigra. Now, uh, we reported in the journal Neurology in 1996 that 38% of the men with REM behavior disorder eventually converted to Parkinson's disease and nothing else. Now we're up to 81% conversion from REM behavior disorder to Parkinson's disease, and centers from around the world are reporting that at least two-thirds of their patients convert. Uh, so really, this is uh, an actually an important development in neuroscience and neurology in terms of early intervention of people at risk for future Parkinson's disease. And uh, so this has launched really a major international effort in terms of identifying REM sleep behavior disorder patients and trying to develop uh, trials of what's called neuroprotective agents to delay, 
greatly or even prevent the future emergence of uh, Parkinson's disease. I should also point out that all this makes scientific sense because the cells in the brainstem related to Parkinson's disease interact very, very closely with the cells in the brain involved with muscle activity uh, and the paralysis activity of REM sleep. So a lesion that interrupts the paralysis activity in REM sleep is a lesion that also can produce Parkinson's disease. It's just a matter of exactly where that initial lesion is, and you either get REM behavior disorder first, and maybe a decade or two later, Parkinson's disease, or you get Parkinson's disease first, and later REM behavior disorder, or you get both together. So I think that that was a major kind of scientific revelation about RBD. The good news for us is that we identified a therapy that helped control these poor people hurting themselves and their wives, and also restored normal dreams.